So today we're going to talk about um, automating programming with SolidWorks Cam and CamWorks. Uh, with this topic in mind, there is uh, a lot of power that's inside uh, SolidWorks Cam and CamWorks to take advantage of, to do some automation for you, um, where the regular stuff, mundane, clicking on uh, and identifying features and pockets and, and operations um, can make you much faster, can also make you more efficient, and also can generate more income for you based on getting jobs through the door, programming parts faster, and when there's changes, being integrated inside one system where you can actually get uh, the automation involved, but also the associativity of being in one file in one system. So you don't have one file to manage. Okay, let me get in click here. Okay. So we often talk about operation based versus fee versus feature based. Operation based is usually a standalone operation. Um, so there's surf cams of the world, different uh, uh, cam uh, packages that are out there where there are standalone operations where you're outside of SolidWorks versus feature based where you're actually using features and you're integrated and you're using knowledge based cam. That being said, does typical workflow or process, because it's always about process, we create or import a solid model. So we jump, so now we're creating something outside of, uh, and programming on something outside of SOLIDWORKS. Then we're selecting a work plane. We're selecting a roughing operations, essentially. Uh, we're just using a roughing as an example. And then we're doing a boundary for the roughing, type of tool path, kind of strategy I wanna do, adaptive, 2D adaptive, whatever I'm doing. Um, what tool do I wanna use? So I need to pick my tool. And these orders can change depending on what CAM system your operation-based CAM system you're using. Some you pick the, the tool first, but you guys get the gist. So specify the feeds and speeds, step over and depths of cut. So what is my depth of cuts that I and my one I want to percent step over? Select the finish operation from there, usually copying from one that exists. You can do that. Um, or creating a new one, doing a finished boundary, type of tool path. Type of finish you want, depth of cuts, what tool you want, and feeds and speeds. Now we repeat this for another pocket. Okay, so yes, you can pick multiple pockets at once if they're the same depth. Yeah, of course you can do that, but if there you have multiple pockets that are not, um, you would have to do them as individual ones and copy from there, which takes time. It takes a lot of time. Um, and then after you're done with that, after you're done with doing all of your pockets, you verify your sim your simulation and you create your G code. Okay, feature based, we create or import a model into SolidWorks. Okay, from there we run automatic feature recognition based on setups, operation tool paths are generated automatically based on the tools we have selected and also our prefer our preferences of how we want a machine uh, based on our standards. Verify and sort the operations if required. So if you like the way um, it has uh, created the order of operations. You can leave it as so, drop and drag, move around, or right click and do a sort really quickly and create your own scheme or your own preferences, how you want to sort things. Uh, if you want to do facing, then you want to do drilling, then roughing, you can do that and create your own, your own default that way or your own type of setup that way. And you can create multiple schemes that way. And verify using simulation and create your G code. Okay, so one versus the other, there's a lot more involved than the other one. And based on the automation, it's where it's learning how we machine. So why it's so much of a shorter thing as far as, as process is that it's looking at the tools you're using inside the technology database, inside SOLIDWORKS camera cameras, and it's grabbing the tools based on how it, it sees the features, so how does it sees the pockets, what fits inside there. So it's running off of knowledge base. And that being said, it's all about process. I always talk about this with a lot of customers. It's all about process. How do you do it today? Where are your inefficiencies, et cetera? Um, you're actually with SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS, you're inside SOLIDWORKS. Everything looks like SOLIDWORKS, the inter user interface is the same. You have all SOLIDWORKS at your fingertips. You have surfacing, you have um, of course, sketching and all that right at your fingertips. Um, very powerful tools that you're, you can use 
to help if you need it for programming any any three axis, four or five axis um, items as well. You always are doing the, the, the current version because you have one part file. Your CAD file and your, and your CAM file are one and the same. That being said, if there's a revision on the, on the CAD side and you already have the part program, CAM will be aware of it when you get in there. It'll want to update tool pass based on all the changes that, are, that have happened and occurred. No more translation issues. You don't have to save out anymore. Um, you don't have to, when there's a change, you don't have to reprogram the part or fix the part to match the revision you have. So there's no error involved in between there. Um, all your data is stored in the solvers file. So all your tool pass and operations live inside that file. If you're a, a the engineer or, or the CAD user or the designer and you don't have SOLIDWORKS CAM or CAMWORKS turn on, you're not gonna see those and, and it's not gonna matter to you. Um, so they'll just keep designing as they, as they do so. And then from there, um, when you get, when you as a programmer get in, you will have SOLIDWORKS CAM or CAMWORKS turn on. And when you go there, it'll want to update the toolpaths based on what the CAD changes happen. Okay, so one file to manage, no external files, and the feature-based intelligent machining, what I was talking about of the technology database, which I'm about to get in here. Okay, so this part right here has seven setups. Okay, seven setups, and I programmed this part in right around a minute. So I don't know if any current CAM system you have, if you can program this part in one minute with seven setups, but this can be, this can be a possibility and is a possibility um, for automation. There is, yes, there is some setup. There are some things that you need to tell how you like the machine and different things that way and what tools you want, set up your tool crib and your machine. And then from there, you can go ahead and it just initially takes some setup from there. After that, you can go ahead and actually take advantage of this feature-based machining. So it's looking at the model. The model changes. These are the things that you can automatically recognize. Um, way over 20 features. You can recognize pockets, holes, slots, um, you know, any type of uh, hole. So you can ream, you can bore, you can thread, you can uh, you can also do um, slots. You can do circular bosses. You can check for islands automatically. It'll recognize islands automatically. And also, this works with SOLIDWORKS data files and imported models. So you can bring imported models in and leave it as a dumb solid if you want and just go ahead and program the part. That's on the million. The turning is the same way So, or uh, with that. So turning has automatic feature recognition. So it'll also pick up profiles, ODs, IDs, cutoff. It'll also do face-offs, rectangular grooves, um, OD groove, ID groove and profiles and face features are recognized for imported and non-native. It doesn't matter how the part was modeled, essentially. There's tools that ways to get around how to dissect the part uh, to what you want to do. So someone can make it a revolve inside SOLIDWORKS or build it with a bunch of circles to make it look like you see here. It doesn't matter how the part's modeled. So let's look talk a little bit more about knowledge-based machining. Really, what, what is that? So what we do inside the technology database, it houses our tools, our preferences and how we like to, how we like the machine based on our operations and the features linked to the features that way. And then also from there we have, we can build our own or create our machine that we have in there and link our post, link our tool crib to that machine. So it's picking the tools that we want to use. What it does is allows us to capture and reuse best practices. So we can save as defaults what we like to do or even create our own strategies. So maybe what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a certain finish. We like a certain finish on based on the operations we have and the tools we use it in the certain order. We can save that as a strategy and use that at any time. You can even make that as a default if you want to. It's based on rules. So it's there's some if then statements in there. If this is this size, plus or minus, whatever size for the tool to get to fit into, and then go from there. Um, and then Again, the technology database is set up as a um, as a tool for it to learn with you. So essentially, you're you, you're gonna it's gonna set at a kind of a median basis, and from there, roughs are set up a certain way, and then you can then tweak them how you want as a standard, and override them, and then also set up your own. So the rules is very nice because 
Um, there, a lot of the rules are already set up. You just need to tweak them. There's nothing that you really need to create unless you want to do any special strategies uh, to do that. Okay. We also can take valid advantage of tolerance based machining where we can machine to the mean on everything. So we can go ahead and with these with these uh, holes here, we will see we have a drill versus a bore, and then it'll recognize a tolerance that you set to whether or not it does a drill or a bore or a ream based on the tolerances that, you, that are set. So we take advantage of tolerance-based machining and DIM expert to do that. Okay. So um, we offer also mentoring and implementation services and for customizations of the technology database. Um, so a lot of times when you, you get in it to know where uh, you're at and which way, which, which direction you want to go um, based on how, how you do things. So do you have a laser machine? Do you have um, just mills? Do you have, do you have layers? How can we help you customize that to, to get that the way you want to? And maybe it's just showing you how to do one um, and, and kind of going from there. It, it's it is intuitive to learn. There's tutorials that come with the software as well. But uh, to sit down with one of the TAM services for people for a little while and actually get some kind of um, customization or mentoring training on what uh, what you're trying what you're trying to do to help you point in the right direction uh, to be more efficient at what you're doing and help you adapt to to become better at what you're looking to do to move forward. All right. 